Hey guys, it's me, Saren, back with another video doing our, our sixth <laughs> hidden figure uh, live in my dinosaur pajamas. It's been like, just like so much going on and like filming so many videos and like everything, everything like ah. So today's hidden figure is Fanny Coffin, who I knew of, but I didn't know exactly like how much she had done until I started doing some research for this video. Uh, so I'm just going to jump right into it. Born a slave in Washington, D.C., Fanny Jackson, as she was born, excuse me, Fanny Jackson's freedom was purchased by her aunt at the age of 12. Fanny Jackson spent the rest of her youth working as a servant for author George Henry Calvert, studying at every opportunity and getting schooling whenever she could. By age 14, she was supporting herself in Newport, Rhode Island and struggling for an education. It was in me, she wrote years later in her autobiography, to get an education and to teach my people. This idea was deep in my soul. She attended Rhode Island State Normal School, and in 1860, she enrolled in Oberlin College in Ohio, the first white college in the United States to accept both black and female students well before integration. She writes in her autobiography, the faculty did not forbid a woman to take the gentleman's course, but they did not advise it. There was plenty of Latin and Greek in it, and as much mathematics as one could shoulder. Now I took a long breath and prepared for a delightful contest. All went smoothly until I was in the junior year in college. Then, one day, the faculty sent for me, an ominous request, and I was not slow in obeying it. It was a custom in Oberlin that 40 students from the junior and senior classes were employed to teach the preparatory classes. As it was now time for the juniors to begin their work, the faculty informed me that it was their purpose to give me a class, but I was to distinctly understand that if the white pupils rebelled against my teaching, they did not intend to force it. Fortunately for my training at the normal school and my own dear love of teaching, though there was a little surprise on the faces of some when they came into the class and saw the teacher, i.e. a black woman, there were no signs of rebellion. The class went on increasing in numbers until it had to be divided, and I was given both divisions. One of the divisions ran up again, but the faculty decided that I had as much as I could do, and it would not allow me to take any more work. And again, you have to realize this was well over a hundred years before fake-ass integration. During her years as a student at Oberlin College, she also taught an evening course for Black Americans in reading and writing, and she graduated with a bachelor's degree in 1865. Her class was for freedmen, so people that um, especially were freed after the Civil War and wanted to learn how to read and write. After her graduation in 1865, Fanny Jackson was appointed to the Institute for Colored Youth, a Quaker school in Philadelphia that is now known as Cheney University. In 1869, she became head principal, making her the first black American female principal of a school in the United States. In a letter to Frederick Douglass in 1876, she explained her commitment. I feel sometimes like a person to whom in childhood was entrusted some sacred flame. This is the desire to see my race lifted out of the mire of ignorance, weakness, and degradation, to no longer sit in obscure corners and devour the scraps of knowledge which are flung at him. I want to see him crowned with strength and dignity, adorned with the enduring grace of intellectual attainments. Established a women's industrial exchange to display the mechanical and artistic works of young women, and founded a home for girls and young women to houseworkers from out of town. Moreover, she persuaded employers to hire her pupils in capacities that would utilize their education. In 1881, she married Reverend Levi J. Coppin, a prominent AME minister, and together they were a driving force in Black America. In 1893, Coppin was one of five Black American women invited to speak at the World Congress of Representative Women in Chicago. Mrs. Coppin retired from running the Institute of Colored Youth in 1906 due to health concerns. She died on January 21st, 1913 at the age of 76. In 1926, a Baltimore teacher training school was named in her honor as the Fanny Jackson Coppin Normal School, and it is now known as the HBCU Coppin State University. And shout out to Coppin because I know like I've known a lot of people that have gone there to Coppin. In her last years, she completed her autobiography, and let me just say that 
For the longest time, I did not know that Coughlin was named after this black woman. I didn't know. In her last years, she completed her autobiography, Reminiscences of School Life, where she recounted her work as a lifelong advocate for the education and social uplift of black American women and girls. Fanny Coffin, a hidden figure. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, there will be, as always, links in the description box. See you guys next time. Peace.